Good morning. Today is Friday, October 7th, 2022. This year, there is a special mitzvah that is relevant for us. Of course, there are 613 mitzvahs, 613 commandments in the Torah. Number 613 is for each person to write or to have a Torah scroll or publish works of the Torah. We discussed that before. 612, the penultimate mitzvah, is a mitzvah from the parsha of Vayelech. We read it just a couple of weeks ago. And the Torah says as follows. Vayetzav Moshe Osam Lemar, God told Moshe to command the people saying, again, this is at the end of 40 years in the desert, at the end of Moshe's life, and the people are about to enter the land of Israel, and Moshe is telling them what it's going to be like and what they should do once they enter Israel. So Moshe commands them, Miket Sheva Shonim, at the end of every seven years, meaning after every Shemitah year, B'moed Shnas HaShemitah B'chag HaSukos, on during the holiday of Sukkos that follows Shemitah. So, first of all, in parentheses, we are about to start Sukkos that follows Shemitah. We just finished the Shemitah, the sabbatical year, and we are about to start Sukkos. So that's why this applies to us. It's a mitzvah that applies only once every seven years. Bevo kol Yisrael leiros esbenei Hashem when the entire Jewish people has assembled in Jerusalem because there's a mitzvah for the three festivals for every Jewish person to ascend to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, to offer sacrifices and to celebrate the holiday together. So when everyone is there, Tikra es Torah azos neged kol Yisrael baznehem. There should be a public reading from the Torah to the entire Jewish people assembled, hakel es ha'am, hakel, gather together the people. That's what we refer to this mitzvah as the mitzvah of hakel. Gather together the people, ha'anashim v'hanashim v'ataf, men, women, and children, l'man yishmu u'l'man yilmadu v'yaru es Hashem alakechem, in order for you to hear and in order for you to learn, to revere and to respect Hashem, your God. And V'sham Lulasos is called Divriyata Razos, that you will be inspired to observe all the commandments of the Torah. By the way, I was just complaining a little while ago about how difficult it is for me to speak to a large room of, let's say, five or six hundred people, obviously without a microphone. How in the world one person is going to be able to speak outside in public so that I guess it would have been millions of people to hear, presumably at that time was without amplification. I don't know practically how it worked, but obviously it did. It did happen. So this is a mitzvah for every Jewish person of every age to gather in Yerushalayim, our sages explain, on the second day of Sukkot. So in Israel, that's the first day of Chol HaMoed. It's not permitted to do this on Shabbos or Yom Tov. So the first available day on Sukkot in Israel is the second day, which is the beginning of Chol HaMoed. And what would happen is a platform would be set up in the courtyard of the Beis Hamikdash, the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, and the Melech, the king. And their discussion about could it be another type of head of state? Head of state. Um, that's a discussion we'll come back to later. But the king would read from the Torah, and there were certain brachos, certain blessings he would say. But he would read from the Torah to the entire assembled people. There are different opinions about which passages from the Torah he would read, but it would most of the opinions would include various passages, especially from the book of Dvarim, which is composed mostly of speeches that Moshe gave to the Jewish people to adjure them and to inspire them to keep God's commands when they enter the land of Israel. And that, of course, was the theme of what this was recurring every seven years. So, for example, it would certainly include reading 
the Aserah Sedibros, the Ten Commandments, Shema Yisrael, and other portions of the Book of Dvarim, uh, there are differences of opinion of exactly which passages would be read. The goal of this mitzvah is expressed by the Rambam when he writes as follows, Chayavin lahachin libam lahakshiv oznam It's necessary for every single person to prepare their heart and to get ready their ears, to ready their ears, lishmoa, to hear the ema, the yira, the gila, barada, with uh, trembling and with awe and with reverence. The words of the Torah that would be read aloud by the king, kiyom shenitna bo besinai, like the day that the Torah was originally given by God at Mount Sinai. In other words, this hakel ceremony is intended to be a recreation of the revelation at Sinai. Of course, in this case, a human being, the king, is going to read these words, but reading God's words and a recreation of this event where the entire Jewish people and God entered into this covenant, this relationship, this bris, this was a reaffirmation of the original covenant between God and the Jewish people once every seven years. And this was done this would be done to emphasize and to reestablish the truth of our law, of our religion. And every person should see themselves as if right now, as I'm listening to this king in Jerusalem saying these words, it's as if I myself am newly entering into this covenant with God, and I have to imagine it is as if I'm hearing these words from God himself, because the king is the messenger, the intermediary through whom God will speak at this amazing historic event once every seven years. One significant detail of this mitzvah is when the Torah says it is anashim v'nashim v'taf, men and women and children, and our sages say that that means even babies from the age of 30 days after birth, every single child was required to be there. Now, that's a very strange feature. We do not find this by any other mitzvah in the Torah. Children are exempt from the obligation to perform mitzvahs. That's why we refer to a boy at 13 being bar mitzvah, a girl at 12 being bat mitzvah. That is the age, 13 for a boy, 12 for a girl, when they become responsible, obligated to observe all the commandments. Before that, they're not. There is a rabbinic requirement called chinuch to educate children. So, as a child learns how to do a certain mitzvah, he or she should be encouraged to do it. Parents, and now teachers, should teach children what to do and how to do so that by the time they turn bar and bat mitzvah, they'll be ready. But number one, that's only a rabbinic requirement. And number two, that only starts for each mitzvah when a child is able to do it. When a child knows how to shake lulav and esrog, a parent should have a lulav and esrog for the child. When the child is old enough to, to start to learn how to pray, parents or teachers should teach children how to pray, etc., etc. For every mitzvah, at the age that a child is able to understand and to do what it requires, that's what it applies. But there's no mitzvah of chinuch, of educating a child for a baby, for a one-month-old baby, it doesn't exist anywhere else in the Torah. So why should this requirement be here? So allow me to share with you two answers, two remarkable answers. There's a passage in the Talmud. The Talmud says as follows. 
Im anashim bayim lulmod, nashim bayis lishmoa, men and women come to hear and to learn taf lama bayin. Why is there an obligation for children to come? Kide litein schar lemeviehen, in order to give a reward to their parents for bringing them. What does that mean? The Talmud goes on to say that there was one of the scholars, Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Yeshua, Samach Biyosar al Drasha Sataf. Rabbi Yeshua was extremely excited when he heard this lesson about what is the mitzvah to bring even these babies to give reward to their parents. What does that mean? Because he remembers that when he was a baby, his mother would wheel him in his stroller to the synagogue and to the study hall. Of course, he didn't understand what was happening. He couldn't speak. He didn't understand the words. But simply the experience of being exposed to the study of Torah and to words of prayer, that had an effect on him. When parents bring their children to school, even to, to, to the synagogue, even if the children are not yet able to engage in prayer, the experience of being brought to a Jewish place with other Jewish people where people are serving God, it, there is an experiential component that has a lasting effect on children. And of course, we know this today. The Malbim explains this as follows. Because the babies who come, they don't know intellectually the words that are being read, and they're not thinking about other subjects. Avol yasigu toeles kloli yoser meagdolim. The Malbim says that the babies will receive more of an impact than the adults. Because this event that they attended, it will be in their memory, it will be in their imagination for their entire life. They will never forget it. How could a person ever forget the experience of being together with the entire Jewish people and hearing the king read from the Torah. There is an experiential component to this where parents are rewarded by bringing their children because they are giving their children an experience that will last them the rest of their lives. That's one approach. There's a second answer a deeper answer, and this refers to a remarkable aspect of that original encounter with God at Mount Sinai, where the Torah says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael Neged Ahar, when the Jewish people, after leaving Egypt, reached the Sinai area, the Torah says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael Neged Ahar, the Jewish people camped around the mountain, Mount Sinai. And our sages point out, by Yichan Shom is written in the singular. It was the entire people. It should have been in the plural. But it's written in the singular. That person, ki ish echad belev echad, like one person with one heart. There was a sense of unity that existed among the Jewish people when they stood at Mount Sinai, greater than at any time in the past or ever will be in the future. So much so that they're referred to in the singular as one, one individual. The greatest moment of unity of purpose, unity of values, unity of goals. And it is that event that we try to recreate every seven years with this mitzvah of Hakel. Listen, please, to the words of the Talmud concerning the event at Sinai. Shekol nafshos Yisrael amdu bebrizu. Every single soul of the Jewish people, not only those who are physically present, but those souls that would be born in the future. And our sages tell us even those souls of individuals who in the future would convert to Judaism, their souls were also present 
at Mount Sinai, so much so that every single soul is really one connected soul. We are, the entire Jewish people, one soul, unified. And therefore, to reenact that moment, every single part of the soul of the Jewish people needs to be there. And if any single part of the soul is not there, if even a baby is not there, then the entire soul is lacking. The entire nefesh is lacking. Listen, please, to the words of Rabbi ben Zion Uziel, a former chief rabbi of Israel. L'chein tzrichim kol chelkei nefesh zos li matzei Therefore, it's necessary for every single component of this one gigantic organic soul of the Jewish people to be present in order for the cloud, the community, the soul of the entire Jewish people to be present in its most complete sense. And that's why even children had to be brought. And it's highly significant that this mitzvah occurs just after the Shemitah year ends, at the end of the sabbatical year, which ended just before Rosh Hashanah. Because, as we just saw, this mitzvah is and reestablishes reenacts the original covenant of the entire Jewish people with God Listen, please, to the way Mayor Tamari explains this. This assembly of the entire nation was gathered immediately after the end of the Shemitah year. Rabbi Cook saw the Shemitah year, the sabbatical year, as coming to cure Israel of the social dislocation economic greed and oppression of the previous six years. Remember, we discussed this a number of times during the past year, how Shemitah has this social aspect where there is no private ownership. Everything is shared. Everyone is equal. Equal Debts, certain debts are forgiven. There is this lessening of the gap between wealthy and needy. There is this understanding and emphasizing of the social fabric of the entire Jewish people. Whatever grows is not my own private property. It belongs to everyone equally. Just as Shabbos comes to cleanse us of the materialism and mundane of the days of the week, Shemitah comes every seven years for one entire year to cure us of the social dislocation and economic greed and oppression. The Hakel is the public demonstration of this spiritual and moral lesson of the sabbatical year. It is the application of the innermost religiosity and cohesiveness of a people living according to a divinely revealed Torah. This is the capstone. This is the climax of that entire year of respecting the earth, of bringing people back together, of encouraging the the self-worth and self-esteem of every person and strengthening the social fabric of the Jewish people, the capstone, the final moment is this hakel moment where we then reconnect and reestablish this covenant with God as we did originally at Sinai, pledging to live lives in accordance with the laws of the Torah and with the values of the Torah. It is an incomparable event, something that one's experienced could never be forgotten. The next time we meet with God's help, we'll explore the meaning of Hakel today. For now, my friends, I want to wish you a great day and a wonderful Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.